Okay. 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 Oh. Whew. Hey, thanks so much for coming out here on such short notice. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting anything. Oh, you're so kind. You know, I actually just got my hair done, and I'm, I'm glad you like it. It's, uh, it. It means a lot. It really does. But anyway, I know you're uh, really busy, and I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time, but, uh, well, you remember how uh, about a month ago at a Too Many Games, Hades Common introduced us? Yeah, and then he requested for me to uh, review you, and yeah, and you know, being being the kind of person I am, I, I you know, I can't say no to something like that. Well, anyway, this this is <laughs> this is really hard for me to explain to you, but uh, well, as you can see, I'm uh, I'm pregnant, and the uh, the child is yours. How did this happen? What do you mean? You just kept giving it to me and you wouldn't stop. I'm not saying it wasn't consensual and I'm not saying I didn't enjoy myself, but what I am saying is, you know, I got pregnant and I went in and took a test to verify it and you're quite literally the only Xbox 360 game that's done that to me. So, case and point, it's your child. So I was, I was hoping that, you know, maybe we could you know, hang out a little bit more, really get to know each other, you know, maybe even be together and we can provide a foundation for this child. Oh, oh, okay, you gotta use the bathroom, that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll wait right here. Go ahead, take your time. Well, I hope it pays child support at least. You're here for a game review. We'll tell you the truth You're here for the inside scoop And Honest Bigums will tell you Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my honest opinion of Ace Combat 6. This is a game that was developed by Project Aces and was released back in 2007. The game falls into the flight simulator genre, but you know what, I always just called it airplane games and to me, that's just easier to say. The franchise began in 1995 with the release of a game called Air Combat, although it was called Ace Combat in Japan. Its sequel, Ace Combat 2, was released in 1997 and Ace Combat 3 was released in 1999. For a long time, the game's publisher, Namco, was releasing more games in the series for only PlayStation consoles, such as the PS1, the PS2, and the PSP. It wasn't until 2007 that a game was released on a different console, the Xbox 360 in this case. I want to go ahead and just put this out there guys, in my younger days I was all about airplane games. I played Aces of the Pacific on my old Windows 95 computer. Terrible game, don't try it. To be honest, I'm really not sure what I saw in it. Annoying sound effects, piss poor music, and atrocious graphics. I've seen better games on the Genesis. Which brings me to this game, Afterburner 2. Now this game, oh man, uh, yeah, it's really not that great either. I never beat it when I was a kid, and it sure as hell hasn't gotten any easier as an adult. But it's better than Aces of the Pacific, that's what's important. I've played a ton of other flying games like Star Fox 64, but if I go into details about every game I've played, we'd be here all day. I've, I've played that many. Back to Ace Combat 6. Gonna be honest, I've never played or even heard of this franchise. But playing it now showed me that I missed out. I remember looking at the cover when I worked at GameStop and thought the game just looked stupid. And the fact that the game was only like $15 pre-owned, it just made me not want to play it even more. But thanks to Hades Common and his gracious donation of this game to me, I have finally gotten a chance to play it for myself and see what it was all about. Did I enjoy it? Well, you know what, we'll get to that. But for now guys, here's the question. Is this game any good? And is it something I could recommend to you? Let's find out. 
Okay, like I said, Ace Combat 6 is an airplane game, a pretty by the numbers one at that. You fly around and you destroy enemies. Although this game does offer some variety here, but we'll get to that as the video goes on. Before I started writing this script, I went ahead and did some quick research, not, not too in depth, but I wanted to see just what critics were saying about the game. I was surprised to see that the game was getting really good scores. IGN gave it 8.4 out of 10, Metacritic gave it 80%, and then I figured, you know what, let's dig a little further and see what players are saying about the game. And even regular people like you and me were giving this game some pretty great scores. My favorite is this guy's right here. He says it's very entertaining, as opposed to entertaining. Wow, that must mean the game is really good if it's entertaining, right? Jokes aside though, I played the game and I'm going to go ahead and take my hat off to it. This game was indeed an entertaining experience for me. But no review is complete without going into details, so let's start with that plot. But first, spoiler warning guys, if you don't want to have it ruined for you, please skip to this part of the video now. The story begins in a country called Emeria, or not America as I call it, and we're in the capital of this place called Grace Maria, or not California. Melissa Herman watches her daughter Matilda getting on a school bus for a field trip. As she watches the bus drive away and get ready to cross a bridge, aircrafts just suddenly swoop in and blow up the not Golden Gate Bridge. Not American fighter pilots scramble to intercept the surprise invasion by the Estevakian, or not Russian Air Force, resulting in a full-scale war between the two nations. The not American Air Force and Navy manage to repel the first attack, but Nimbus cruiser missiles launched from offshore destroy any aircraft ship within the blast radius, crippling nearly half the not American forces. Ace pilots from the not-Russian Air Force led by Lt. Col. Victor Wojcik arrive on the heels of the attack to establish their air supremacy over not California. With the airborne warning and control system deciding that their military is at a huge disadvantage, an evacuation was ordered to all pilots and they're instructed to retreat to the west. The forces rendezvous at Kashid Island, you know, I, I don't have a special name for that, not gonna lie, but it's still under control of not America, and they organize to conduct a counterattack against the invasion. Civilians are evacuated from the city to the west as well, during which Melissa discovers the wreckage of an aircraft flown by her husband, a pilot of the not American Air Force. After arriving at a refugee camp, she hears the voice of her daughter on a radio broadcast in not California, and she begins to journey back to the city to reunite with her daughter. Meanwhile, in Not California, Wojciech is assigned to ground intelligence role following his injuries that he sustained during an early stage of the war. The game puts Garuda Team, one of Not America's top tier ace pilots, in charge of several counterattack missions. Missions that are planned to weaken Not Russia's forces, allowing Not America to take back Not California from <laughs> Not Russia. Over the course of several months, we see that Melissa finally makes it back to Not California, but doesn't immediately find her daughter. Matilda had been hiding out underground with other children believed to be orphans. Eventually, not American forces weaken the enemy's defenses and are finally ready to take back not California. After a long, intense battle, not California is liberated and back in not America's control. The celebration is short-lived, however, as Wojciech reveals that not Russia is one more ace up their sleeve. You see, not Russia had developed a weapon designed to protect its country from falling meteors, cause, you know, apparently that's a thing, but hey, video games. Their plan is to kill every not American and completely level the land, allowing them to build it as they see fit. Getting some pretty serious Metal Gear vibes right now. Russia will rise again. But anyway, Melissa contacts the not American military and informs them of the weapon and its weak points. Finally, the not Americans destroy the weapon and the two countries sign a ceasefire treaty. Peace has been restored and Melissa and her daughter turn their house into an orphanage for children who lost their parents to the war. At first guys, I thought the story was kinda dumb. But after I beat it, I went ahead and watched all the cutscenes on YouTube later, and now I can say... eh, it's alright. Not a bad story, but it's definitely the weakest aspect of the game. There's a cutscene after every mission, but I didn't sense any coherency at first. One scene you'll see Melissa wandering around Not America with some chick who's completely uninteresting. The next scene will be showing Wojciech wandering around Not California talking to himself. And then another scene you'll see some soldiers plotting to break into a bank vault. What? By the time the end comes around, all the characters meet and any questions you had are answered. That much they got right, but I just can't help but to scratch my head and ask, WHAT THE HELL WAS THE POINT OF THOSE CUTSCENES? 
Furthermore, you never see the character you control as. By the way, his name is Talisman. I assume the character is supposed to be a representation of you, because not only do you not see him, but he doesn't talk either. Truthfully, I kind of wish it would have let you pick your own code name, just so you can, know, make it feel more like yourself. But oh well, I mean, you can't always have it your way, right? Like I said, it's really not a bad story, but honestly, it just doesn't meet my standards. And personally, guys, I don't think my standards are that high to begin with. Since the story's a bit dull, you'd naturally think that the gameplay would probably make up for it. Is that the case here? Well, I like to think it does, with one exception, but you know, I, I, I will get to that. For now, here's how it works. You assume control of Garuda 1. Again, this character represents you. You control as yourself from beginning to end. At the beginning of each stage, you get briefed on what the mission entails. More often than not, it's just a matter of flying here, blow up enemies or objectives, fly there, blow more shit up, lather, rinse, repeat. I know it sounds a bit monotonous, and looking back, it probably is. However, each mission will introduce you to a different type of enemy or objective to destroy, so I think that helps break the monotony. Each level will have different land, sea, or air enemies. Mind you, they're all part of the not-Russian military. At the beginning of each stage, you have the ability to select your aircraft. It should be noted, however, that you have to purchase your plane before you can actually use it with the in-game currency. And that, folks, was back in the day when microtransactions weren't even a thing yet, and it sure was great. Nowadays, you can't play any game and unlock anything without having to pay extra. Digression aside, the money is earned depending on how well you do in the missions. Completing in a certain amount of time, number of enemies you destroy, number of allies lost, all of that and more factor in on how much money you get. You also can't purchase an aircraft unless you encounter them in battle, which is kind of weird to me, hear me out for a second. These aircrafts are mostly the ones used by Not Russia, so you're basically using Not Russian planes to combat Not Russian pilots who are also using Not Russian planes. Anyway, each level is different in their own right. You've got stages where it's nothing but air-to-air dogfighting, and then you've got levels where it's mostly air-to-ground warfare, where you gotta destroy enemy vehicles and bases. And finally, some of the levels are air-to-sea combat, where you have to destroy not-Russian naval vessels. And later stages are a combination of all three. The planes individually have their own stats that are shown here. It sometimes gives you an idea of what plane to pick for the mission. The thing is though, I notice that it really doesn't matter which one you choose, and it definitely doesn't matter which plane you choose for your wingman. You can also select which type of secondary weapon you want to use for your plane as well. This is important because each special weapon is only good against certain enemies, so make sure you pay attention to the mission briefing. There were times where I picked air-to-air -air missiles when I actually needed air-to-ground bombs. Whoops. Mind you, you can still beat the mission with generic missiles, however, using bombs makes it much simpler to wipe out multiple ground enemies at once. There's no bosses or anything like that, just forgettable characters piloting planes that just want to kill you, and they usually go down very easily, so they're pretty much just regular minions. During the stage, you have a radar that's right here. Obviously, you can use this to track where your enemies are, and you can even expand it to find out where more of the action is. It can also help you dodge enemy missiles, so, I mean, the, the radar works really well, I, I like it. If you played Star Wars Rogue Leader on the GameCube, you may remember that you can issue commands to your teammates to attack the enemy or cover you. Well, you can do that here as well, but I gotta be honest, your teammates are f***ing worthless. The only time they come in handy is when you have to issue an allied attack command. Once you do that, all your allies will completely wreck everything. Sadly though, I didn't even know about it until near the end of the game, cause, well, I'm stupid. Yeah, that's what I get for skipping the tutorial. An allied attack sounds great, but lo and behold, you can't spam it either. You see this meter here? You can only issue an allied attack if the meter reaches a certain point. The meter fills up with every time you kill an enemy, so I mean it really won't take long before you can use it again. So how does this game control? Well, being a bit of an airplane game veteran, I've got nothing to complain about guys. I think it was pretty much perfect. I mean, try it for yourself, see how you like it. It's one of those cases where the control is easy to learn, but it's difficult to master. I didn't feel like the control ever got in my way personally. However though, there is something about the game that did get in my way. This game isn't very long, only about 15 stages, and they can take anywhere from 15 minutes to SEVERAL HOURS to complete. Can you guess what that something is? I'll give you a hint. It starts with D, and ends with difficulty. 
This game is hard. It is ridiculous how much this game pissed me off. In fact, it even inspired me to bring back something from my channel called Rant Mode. Warning. The following contains uncensored, explicit language and minor sexual innuendos. Viewer discretion is advised. Please skip to this part of the video if you are easily offended. You have been warned. Before I commence this rant though, I have one question for you. Do you enjoy cream pies? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm not talking about the food. That's delicious. I'm talking about when you're making sweet love to your significant other, and then your significant other ejaculates inside you. That's the cream pie I'm talking about. This game right here will cream pie you. A lot, actually. Fuck! This game doesn't care who you are or what you've done. It simply wants to impregnate you. Shit! And when it does, it will never call you again. That's how fuck brutal this game is. In the first few stages, it's really not that bad. Yeah, you'll die fuck a couple times, but then it hits you with level 9. Oh man, level fucking 9. I got stuck on this level for hours. You gotta destroy these massive flying fortresses, all while dodging attacks from minions. Fuck! Sounds simple? Well, guess what? It's not. If you focus too much on the big guys, fuck, then the small fries will shoot you down, fuck! But if you focus too much on the small guys, then the big guys will make it to their destination, causing you to fail the mission and have to start over from the beginning. And the biggest, most undisputed nut flicker here is the checkpoint system, shit! It doesn't matter how far you got. It doesn't matter if it's the last enemy. If you die, you have to start over from your last checkpoint. I get it, that's normal, but there does exist games out there that have a forgiving checkpoint system. This game came out in 2007, fuck! There's no excuse here. The checkpoint system is undoubtedly the worst aspect of the gameplay. You have the ability to repair your plane and replenish your ammo. So you could say, hey, doesn't that make it a bit easier? Well, the correct answer is no. When you fly away, they launch cruiser missiles at you that blast your ass to oblivion faster than you can say fuck. It seriously feels like no matter what you do, you're fucked. And I played this game on normal. This is their idea of normal? Look at this. Fuck. There you go, I finally brought rant mode back. Now to go back to being somewhat family friendly. Difficulty aside, the gameplay is actually pretty damn fun. I loved the variety here. Like being able to replenish your plane in mid-air or landing on an aircraft carrier. These are small details that work in the game's favor. Graphically speaking, I think the game looks really good for an early 360 title. While you're flying around, you see the carnage from a distance, making you feel like the land is in total war. One thing that was kind of poor is when you're close to the ground. You'll see the lack of effort with the trees and the buildings. That looks like it's something that's out of a PlayStation 2 or the Xbox original. The soundtrack is awesome. It goes really well with the game's atmosphere. Shoot, I might even look for this soundtrack. It's that good. Now it's time to talk about multiplayer. The thing is though guys, there is not a soul playing this game online anymore, so I'm going to have to resort to using borrowed footage. As always guys, the person the footage belongs to will be annotated on the upper right hand corner of your screen. The multiplayer from what I've seen is okay, but not something I'd spend a long time playing. You have the ability to go head to head with people online, or you can play co-op missions. That's pretty much it. I don't think I missed out, and based off the forums I read, quite a few people concur. So now let's recap. The story is whatever, it's neither good nor is it bad. The gameplay is a lot of fun with the exception of that god awful difficulty. The graphics are good and the soundtrack is awesome. Here are my closing thoughts. To me guys, this game was overall fun. I kind of fell off of airplane games and replaced them with first person shooters, but playing this game for the first time really did make me feel like a kid again. I used to love these types of games, difficult or not. Anyone that's played this game already knows what I'm talking about when it comes to the difficulty. Challenge is a good thing, and I think the game offered, I'm going to say, moderately fair challenge. The checkpoints may be BS, but it's not the end of the world. All in all folks, Ace Combat 6 to me is a good time. There are newer entries into the series, so there probably isn't much of a reason to go back and play this one, but considering that I did indeed have fun with it, I can definitely recommend you guys pick it up for yourself. It's only $20 at GameStop, so it's really not that big of a deal. And that, folks, is my honest opinion. 
And to Hades Comet, I want to thank you again for this gracious donation that you've given me. You've actually helped me remember my love for airplane games, and honestly, it just it made me feel like a kid again, and that, that's a good feeling. And plus, this game gave me a reason to bring Ramp Mode back, so there's that too. Thanks a lot, dude. I hope you enjoyed the video. And now I want to know what the rest of you guys think. Does Ace Combat 6 look like a good game to you? Is it something you could recommend a friend to? Leave it all in the comments section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe for more content. We still only have a few weeks left until the release of Sonic Mania. It's so close, guys. I can't wait. But the show must go on until that game comes out. And I've decided to take a look at a franchise that I'm actually kind of shocked that I haven't looked at sooner. Anyway, the next game that's up for review is Star Wars The Force Unleashed. This is going to be a special episode because I'm going to be having a special guest here. I look really forward to working with him. But guys, until that video comes out, you all have a fantastic night, and take care. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a comment or by hitting the like button. You should also consider subscribing if you're new here. There's a new review every two weeks and live streams every Monday and Wednesday. Y'all have a great night and take care.